All right. Thank you for connecting once again. We're talking about the prophetic word. We saw how through the prophetic word, we can bring forth a message that builds people up, builds the church up. Uh, and also, the prophetic word can reveal one's character, reveals one's potential. Now, the prophetic word can um, help reveal God's plans and purposes for people's lives. We know that every child of God, we already have this privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, we see there that um, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. So we are assured that the work of the Holy Spirit is real in every believer's life. As children of God, we are led by God. Uh, and also in John chapter 16, uh, talking about the activities of the Holy Spirit, Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. You know, the Holy Spirit will take from that uh, which is uh, of the Father. He'll reveal it to us and um, lead us in the path that God has for us. So already the Holy Spirit is working in the area of revelation in our lives. Now the prophetic word, where does the prophetic word come in? Think of it as a, um, we would say, a bonus. Okay, so that's a good word to describe the prophetic word. We can continue with what has been spoken in the word of God to us. And of course, uh, with our fellowship that we have with the Godhead, with the Holy Spirit, we hear from him and constantly move as he's leading us. But sometimes, you know, there is a prophetic word which is given. Now that acts as a confirmation to what the Holy Spirit is already doing, the way in which the Holy Spirit is already leading us. So that's how we look at a prophetic word. The uh, good example is the case of Paul once again. You know, Paul, he had it in his heart to... Um, uh, go to Jerusalem. Okay, that was something that God had already spoken to him about. But along the way, he had different people. He had, you know, uh, some believers in, uh, I think, the uh, city of Tyre, they, they said that you're going there, don't go there, you'll be bound. Or Agabus also told them, you know, don't go there. Uh, many trials await you. So he knew all that was going to happen. Paul already knew it. But then in addition to what he knew, as far as the leading of the Spirit is concerned, uh, the prophetic word also came. You know, but that was a confirmation to him. So that is how we must uh, work as far as the prophetic word is concerned. So don't run after a prophetic word to make all the big decisions. It's not required. It's not required. Um, in fact, most of the big decisions that we make may not have a prophetic word. They may just have uh, that leading within of the Holy Spirit where we are assured, you know, the peace of the Holy Spirit, where we feel this is the right thing to do. Uh, you know, this is, this is the right decision to make. And you, with maybe counsel, the written word of God speaking to you that it's the right choice, you move ahead with it. Prophetic word or no prophetic word. Sometimes when there is a prophetic word, it is a confirmation. Okay, So um, the prophetic word will reveal the purpose of God, the plans of God to us in that way. Uh, and you know, another good example of the prophetic word revealing what God has in the, in the future for us uh, is that of Zacharias. If you think about uh, you know, this man, he was a godly man, and when his son was born, you know, John the Baptist was born. We read a nice long prophecy that he gives over his own son. So he says, uh, you know, Luke chapter one, verse sixty-seven, uh, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. Who's saying this? His own father. 
his own father is prophesying the destiny of the child uh, the purpose in other words or you know the call of god on this child he is prophesying so the prophetic word can come and reveal the destiny or the what god has the fullness of what god wants for a particular person uh, and then you know he says many other things about uh, uh, john the baptist so this helps us see that god has worked in these ways uh, in in the scripture where plans and purposes even over a child is revealed and that's exactly what took place in john the baptist life he became a man of god so here in our notes again uh, what what we have reiterated is the same thing don't run behind prophetic words if there is a prophetic word which is given about a certain situation then well and good you know okay god has spoken regarding this matter so i have a confirmation now and i can proceed but if at all you don't get it even then with discernment with understanding uh, it's possible to make a decision so any any thoughts so far any anything to talk about yeah so if uh, there isn't anything we can just uh, continue to look at what the prophetic word releases to us um okay so the prophetic word uh it function can also be seen in stirring up you know uh faith in somebody how how do we uh, you know see this happen in, in the word of god so uh if we recall in first kings chapter 17 there is this example of the widow woman of zarafat okay who was ready to have her last meal uh, with her son and uh, die because it was the time of a famine but then elijah came and uh, he released the prophetic word over this woman and what did he say he said something okay and that in turn gave her the faith to act and see the results of that action of faith so he said uh, the bin of flour shall not be used up uh, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the lord sends rain on the earth so she went away and did according to the word of elijah and she and he and her household ate for many days so whatever little bit she had he gave an instruction okay and uh, uh, when she followed that instruction she also saw the fulfillment of this prophecy that he made over her saying that you know nothing you, you will be fine you will be fine um, god is going to take care of you your bin of flour shall not be used up nor shall the jar of oil run away so in a time of great need this actually encouraged her uh, so it's possible that that there are uh, messages from god that come in very difficult times in people's lives and there could be an instruction that uh, is a part of this message where one is told okay you do this and then you know you will see uh, god come and provide for you in this way or uh, you know different things and that builds faith in the individual so the word came faith uh, built up in the person they did what was told to them and they saw the results um, then when elisha okay, he has a very similar uh, incident where he meets uh, another family with a widow and two sons and they are also in a very dire situation and he tells them okay get as many jars as possible fill them um, you know fill them with oil and then they see oil multiplied uh, and uh, god helps them clear their debts by selling the oil so the prophetic word came and it did a supernatural work in the lives of these people so i was just uh, going to say that uh, even in church right sometimes um, a prophetic word is released 
okay uh, and along with that prophetic word is the the working of faith in that person's life um for example you know when uh, when we are ministering suddenly we call out we say that um, god is saying god uh, i i can see somebody with a, with a heart condition here um, or i see the word blockage i remember once it happened i, I felt the word blockage so i said that in church i see the word blockage and uh, i think it has to do with people's hearts and uh, if there's anyone who is going through difficulty with their heart god is touching you right now god is healing you right now so there was a girl whose father was uh, admitted in the hospital or something like that just then uh, for the same situation you know heart uh, blockage and i didn't know that i didn't know that but after the meeting i think a few days after she told me but i was so down because of what was going on but when you called it out suddenly i had faith you know so faith accompanies the prophetic word and uh, it can lift up spirits of people and you know when faith rises up they are able to receive their miracle so the prophetic word came even in these two situations it's as if the word came and it stirs up okay and it causes a release of faith so many times when the word of knowledge you know we we generally flow in the word of knowledge in in church settings and we call out different things you know um uh, anybody here with with this condition anybody here with this or this has happened it it can work in many ways i'm not saying this is the only way but one of the primary ways in which it works is you know here is a person maybe they they just don't have faith for that matter or maybe they have faith and they're desperately praying out to god and saying god you know i want you to touch my uh, uh, life i want you to touch my body i want to get healed of this but when they hear that oh the pastor is saying exactly what i am praying about faith gets stir- stirred up and uh, there there is a release of faith on the part of the person and they receive their miracle so the prophetic word can stir up and cause a release of faith and uh, you know that's a, a very very important thing now uh, what else what else can the prophetic word the prophetic word can bring motivation and strength to carry out the plans and purposes of god so uh, when we read about the temple at jerusalem we know that there was a phase where for a very long period of time the uh, temple was not you know it was in it was um uh, this the work had ceased okay and it it did not have the kind of glory that it should have but in those times we see that you know god raised up uh, different prophets they came and they prophesied uh, about the rebuilding of the temple we have prophets like haggai uh, zechariah uh, who you know were there at that time and uh, they spoke a word from god there was king zerubbabel okay who uh, needed an encouragement from god now this work had been stalled uh, over a long period of time and it was very very um, challenging for uh, the person to rebuild but at that time you know prophet we we read in uh, the book of zechariah zechariah chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 the word of the lord was released to zerubbabel it said that not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord of hosts who are you o great mountain before zerubbabel you shall become a plain and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace grace to it so what was god saying god was saying yes uh, there is delay there uh, are all these difficulties standing before you zerubbabel but god is saying you know you will complete this work you will get it done so you see uh, that maybe he needed it he he would have thought that so many people have not been able to do it how can i do it will i be able to finish it so there can be doubts and questions in one's own mind but god can send a motivation and, and say you're doing well you will finish this work don't worry you know it's going to be okay so i remember 
you know particular word that uh, uh, i got when i was in college so it was my first year of college and uh, our course was quite challenging uh, and uh, we would constantly hear from our seniors that uh, you know many people flunked they did not even get the minimum marks and so listening to all of this negativity put me in a in a situation of fear so i was studying but i also praying and saying god i should i should uh, manage you know to pass all my exams so at that time the word that i got was um you know jesus tells the people on the boat right like uh, he says okay i'll see you on the other side so when when he says that to them his disciples basically uh, it it means that nothing is going to happen to them as they cross that that particular uh, water body and that uh, jesus will meet them okay that they will be alive and they are going to meet jesus on the other side so this particular word came to me i will see you on the other side okay so in in my head uh, the interpretation of the word that came i i understood it basically what god was saying is you're going to be fine you know on the other side of your exams i'm going to see you just like those disciples who did not drown you will be fine and you know you're going to clear all your papers so uh, and it worked it really worked uh, and it that was the motivation that i was holding on to every day saying that no god your word has come and you have said in your word you know uh, i will see you on the other side and uh, another thing went wrong like you know in our university th there's another thing where uh, sometimes papers are withheld Uh, because of uh, some offense or something that the student has done wrong primarily or you know some kind of uh, your paperwork has gone wrong so in long story short uh, even though i finished writing my exams well there were only two papers two uh, students results which were withheld one is mine okay and so that really uh, put me in a very distress distressing situation where i said okay god you said i will see you on the other side but i not i didn't get my results so something has gone wrong you know it was a very difficult uh, phase but the beauty of it is all my teachers they said you uh, most people get it after 3 months they will rectify if there is any issue from their side and you'll get it in 3 months your results i said lord nothing doing your word has come to me you said i will see you on the other side i have to get my results and i think i got it in a matter of days and it has never really happened in the you know in in the history of the university and college but it came so uh I, what am i trying to say you know i remember all these instances where the word came and there was motivation there was faith to hold on and you know pull on that promise and say no god you said in your word similarly uh you know we've seen also some of the biblical examples god's word can come and in a situation where someone is really struggling to believe uh they they get that hope they get the faith that they need to continue to battle and finish right finish the work um so any any such examples in your lives where the prophetic word has brought you motivation okay i'm sure you, there'll be lots so if you can think of anything now you can quickly share um i can share yes uh, i think uh, i think about this bible college even uh, i did my first year online so i think that was the most stressful time of my life because uh, all my friends they went to college uh, the college was almost open after covid i think only bible college was not opened and uh, uh, it was very different for me to stay at home while watching all my friends going to college having friends meeting people teachers doing work and i'm on the other hand <laughs> sitting in a uh, online classroom and it was very different for me uh, but 
I think uh, there was one song which uh, prophetically ministered to me that God is looking at your desires and God will take you at the right time. And I think uh, and that first year I have learned a lot. I think even if I came to the offline class, I wouldn't have done much because in that one year, I even at home, I learned a lot. I learned about our college. I learned so many uh, things that I should know before I come here, like how to manage many things and yeah and about the bible college even before even joining uh, i had so many options like what to choose what not to choose i remember before coming to all people's church website there is a song called whatever your plan is that's the one song that i kept listening the whole night and the very next uh, day i felt like okay this is god's plan and these are something that kept me motivated uh, like god has got it and whatever he has did uh, all through my life uh, after my schooling is just amazing like what he has promised he he stayed faithful to it and the songs actually prophetically ministered to me there there is always a one song that i keep holding on to some tough times uh, so yeah that's one thing that i can share and there are so many other instances yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Jafina. Nice to hear that. Uh, yes, Sibya, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, actually, uh, especially I have uh, APC Word of the Lord every year. Um, uh, so it, it always speaks. Uh, we always hear it as a family. And it has spoken to us in great ways uh, throughout the year, actually. Uh, so be, uh, mostly during the beginning of the year, we would be praying about certain things and uh, uh, the word uh, that is released during the beginning of the year, uh, it, it might have you know, personal in implications through the word in those prayers that we are praying. And I can testify that towards the end of the year, whatever I had you know, prayed for, um, most of them are answered it's like for example last year it was 2021 i think it's west go take your mountain uh yeah conquer your giants um yeah that that was the word of the lord uh, i think in 2022 and um yeah i can see like in many areas of our lives in you know, a personal spiritual professional or uh, family in many areas of our life, those it was like a prophetic word to us, and um, uh, yeah, we can testify that each and everything uh, got got fulfilled. Like uh, I can't, you know, uh, maybe not go to specific of it, but uh, go take your mountain or conquer your giant. So there were like, if there were fears that uh, I was. Um, I had to encounter uh, like phase and um, go past that. Yeah, God helped to conquer those fears and um, yeah, to walk in the purposes that God has uh, set for each one in our family. So it's like, uh, 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 yeah, the word of the Lord uh, that always is released at APC it re really speaks to us. Yeah, I might be praying for salvation of uh, family members. So all of them yeah god answers yeah so at the end of the year i'll just take a review like okay <laughs> what happened throughout the year and we'll be thanking and praising god for uh, what whatever happened yeah yeah thank you Amen. thank you uh, thank you Divya. yeah and the, the word of the lord is a prophetic word that you know the pastor hears from God and then he shares it to the church. So thank you for um, sharing from your experiences, uh, both Jafina and Divya. Jafina, uh, did you raise your hand again? That was by mistake. Yeah, I just want to say one one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in this holiday, uh, when, when I went back home, uh, I kind of looked into my old diaries when, when I was like four year old or three, uh, so not fourth, I mean, I was doing my fourth grade or somewhere. Uh, so my, my mom and dad, they were separated because of some job issues. Uh, doing that so i grew up with my mom actually so when i look back but now my dad is with me so 
I wrote so many verses for my dad in the notebook. Uh, like whenever I, I mean, I was little. I, I, I didn't know much about faith or some things. But somewhere, uh, that little girl knew like uh, we should uh, believe on the words. And uh, I've actually made a note like my, uh, my dad is with me. I believe that in Jesus' name. I wrote it somewhere, and I, on the day when my dad came. Uh, to live with us i actually ticked it i actually made a note yeah god answered my prayer and there were so many uh, places like whenever i mean i think this was one of my deepest desire when i was little for for my dad to be with me so uh, every bible there is a prayer note uh, praying for my dad or the verse but those verses actually uh, came into life today my dad is with me uh, we are all staying together i even wrote a verse that says uh, what god has joined let let no one separate uh, these are the little little words uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember whether I struggled this much. But when I look back at the verses, at like what I have written, I was really thanking God. Like He, He's faithful. Uh, what He has promised, He's faithful to it. And uh, what He has told, He's faithful to it. And I remember praying for my dad. Uh, so there was one exam that he had to write to come back uh, and, and to work with us. So th- th- that was the third time he was writing. So I was very small, and I said, "God, you rose up on the third day. <laughs> My dad is writing for the third time. Let him, let him pass this time." But there was a deep sense for me in my heart, like like my dad will definitely come after this. And I was the one who prayed actually before he went for the exam. I was little, really little, uh, but uh, even the result came like he failed. And after a month, he it came like he passed, and then he came. So these are some things like uh, the verses that we hold on. Uh, it really comes into life. I just wanted to share that. I just remembered it. Thank you, thank you, Jafina, uh, for sharing. Uh, we, you know, praise God that whatever God spoke to you, even if you were a little child uh, and you went with that leading you began to invest in uh, declarations and confession of god's word you know really wonderful to see how god's work word worked yeah, in your life and you saw uh, your dad come back so very uh, amazed at uh, the way god has worked and uh, we glorify him for this testimony so uh you know, I, I know that we all have we all have incidents, we all have uh, times, moments where a prophetic word has come, and because of that, we could hold on and we were able to see the fulfillment of God's promise, and um, you know whatever God was was telling us to do we were able to complete it. So thank God, thank God for the prophetic word. And, um, you know, uh, let's let's just see, continue to see how does this prophetic word uh, work. So prophetic word also releases God's power. Now, for example, um, Jeffina was sharing that there were some scriptures, right, that uh, she was holding on to now. As it is, we know that the scriptures, uh, God's word has power in it. You know, as the Bible says, God's word is living and active, you know, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Um, God, God's, it is the word of power. You know, we, we read about that in Hebrews 1.3. So the word in itself has power. But what we are saying is, when the word is for that situation, remember, we, we said that a prophetic word is a now word, or it is it is a relevant word for a circumstance or for a, a given period of time. Now, that word is powerful. So, as it is, God's word is powerful when we use it you know, in the form of declaration. But then, the prophetic word you know, also comes with a certain power to uh, make something happen in that situation. So we have to uh, remember that, okay? Uh, the, the, the word uh, of God here says in Isaiah 44 and verse 26, um, God who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. So the prophetic word 
what what happens when the prophetic word is released performs the counsel there is a work that gets done the job gets done how does the job get done because in that word is the power which is required to get it done another beautiful scripture that we can look at is jeremiah 1 and verse 12 where god is waiting to perform his word or god is waiting to fulfill his word so the very fact that the word has been spoken is that uh there, there is power accompanying it and just because that word is released something is going to happen which will fulfill that prophetic word now this 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 is how it works um and primarily we see something like this happen in the area of uh, healing or we see something like this happen in the area of deliverance or miracles okay but we may not see we we cannot like really apply this as it is in uh, personal prophecy we'll talk about it later because all personal prophecy is conditional wherein um, though god reveals a certain destiny to us and god says ha i'm going to do this in your life it will take my cooperation for god to actually lead me into those things now god is willing to do certain things but i am not cooperative it is possible that you know i don't walk into those promises so personal prophecies are conditional however when it comes to things like healings you know deliverance miracles uh, in in these areas we see uh, that the prophetic word carries power in itself to complete that that work okay right um, uh, there so the prophetic word will also have the power mm, i'm just thinking of an example practical example which would would anybody have an example where the prophetic word came and uh, there was uh, you know power released with that prophetic word in a real life situation yes divya uh you mean to say uh, I, i was just trying to understand whether it is yeah. from the Bi bible or uh, like in a real life from real life real life situation yes um, okay yeah let me just think of it so sure. uh pass i'll quickly share one um, yes yes incident uh, once i was uh, le uh, leading worship at uh, one of our locations and um suddenly i felt like sharing one of the words which is actually a verse from the bible talking about um the uh, reverse would flow in dry lands i think in isaiah i forgot the reference uh, and i just um, asked god then uh, he put that word in me and uh, just released that word at the same time one person among the congregation she also got the same verse and it uh, just before uh, while i spoke um and she was also going through a, a dry season and god just assured her that um uh, the season is changing that she would have a lot of uh, enriched experience with the river of god flowing through her so she got a confirmation and there was a great presence of god she felt i remember that's one of the testimonies as i remember amen praise god so uh, as soon as the prophetic word came there was of course there was encouragement but you know what um, john is saying that there was a presence of god there was a sense of assurance and confirmation as well thank you thank you john for sharing that uh, and you know this is how god god's word works and his prophetic word works yes divya you you have something to share uh yes uh, yes first nancy I, i don't know whether it is a prophetic word or anything but uh, uh -huh. uh, we had the intimacy conference right uh, apc uh, so in the beginning of the year so in that uh, uh i i'm not sure whether it was you or pastor jakes or pastor ashish 
uh, it was about uh, Moses uh, uh, asking God to uh, you know show his glory to uh, asking God to show your show his glory it's in Exodus Exodus 33 uh, 18 so um, then God puts him in the cleft of the rock that's the portion so that word you know the show me your glory that that phrase that just stuck with me yeah and uh, after some days i was going through a, like a little personal uh, uh, difficulty and uh, god just uh, from that word that phrase god just poured out like a downloaded kind of a song to me like a whole song uh, and it was like uh, I, he even gave me the tune for it uh, and uh, I was amazed. It was not me. It was only God's, you know, God is doing it. And uh, I give all glory to God for that. So that that really, you know, that uh, really sparked um, that conference, the whole of it, the intimacy conference really sparked, you know, that um, passion to draw near to God. And, you know, it is... Um, it's very beautiful. I was just visualizing how Moses was like asking God, but as New Testament believers, we are, we can be the carriers of glory, right? We can be not only that uh, God is not even covering our eyes, we can be his glory carriers. So yeah, yeah, I just, I don't know whether it was a power, a demonstration of power, but a difficult situation for me that was turned into a song and uh, I really praise God for that. Uh, when I look back, I praise God for the difficult situation because that uh, that was an initiator for me to write the song. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Dhamya. And, you know, uh, if at all you are okay with sharing your song, then, you know, we, we'll be very blessed to hear it. So please consider uh, sharing sure, your, your songs. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, thank you. So you see how uh, uh, now word, but then the power of that word is leading to uh, a beautiful outcome. Um, so the, the power of God can be released through the prophetic word. The moment we say it, okay, sometimes in uh, healings, we, we say something. We, we, we speak over a growth or we speak over a, 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 a non-functional part of the body. We just release the word, thus says the Lord, you know, you shall, whatever, something, something. What happens? Immediately, the power of God also accompanies that whatever we are saying and there is an outcome. So um, that's how we would understand this particular section of the release of power. And, you know, others of you have uh, shared uh, different uh, incidents as well. So we praise God for that. Now, the prophetic word, it also brings correction and restoration. Uh, we, we talked about uh, Nathan correcting King David. Uh, that was an instruction from the Lord. But the prophetic word, right? Uh, Nathan heard from God. Nathan already knew that David had done something wrong, uh, but it's because of the prophetic word that he was able to bring in correction and uh, also provide direction. But the way he did it, you know, that is, I think, uh, something to um, follow in our own lives because this area of correction is a very tricky area. Uh, the whole point of correction is that we want to build somebody up. But if we do it in the unpleasant way, then forget it. You know, it, 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 it will never build them up. Uh, it, it will not build the person, neither will it build the relationship. So it's, it's tricky. So we really have to pray for wisdom in the uh, release of, of the prophetic word that carries correction in it okay uh, and uh, direction as well okay. all right so let's look at other things that the prophetic word does the prophetic word uh, can bring conviction okay repentance and turning to god um, when we read about prophecy in first corinthians 14 paul writes he says that uh, if an unbeliever 
comes into our our uh, co congregation our gathering uh, when they prophesy he will be convicted okay and that person uh, has the opportunity to uh, turn to god and worship god so the prophetic word and help people know that god is real that he exists uh, so when we go for evangelism i think i've shared some experiences we can we can trust god for a prophetic word you know, sometimes just a prophetic word can bring a person into the kingdom so that's what paul is saying here this is in the context of a gathering but then the prophetic word can bring conviction you know to the heart of an unbeliever the uh, uh, one more good example is the woman at the well remember uh, she was living her own sinful life and when jesus came uh, he could discern what was going on and so he gave her one instruction go call your husband and come here then she says i have no husband then you know he he says okay let me tell you this is what has happened uh, you've had five husbands and the one who you're living with right now he's not your husband so then what what is that a prophetic word right she recognizes this man is not from here how does he know the details of my life and then she immediately responds to him in john chapter 4 verse 19 sir i perceive that you are a prophet okay so conviction or the recognition of god there is a god he knows everything <coughs> you know i need to give my life to god i need to turn things around that can happen through the prophetic word and so uh, you know we must trust god and even when we are speaking to unbelievers or uh, anyone anyone to turn them to christ wouldn't it be wonderful to have a word from god okay so uh, even like when you're traveling maybe in a bus or a train in the airport or just going Uh, you know shopping some place going to a mall is it possible to release a prophetic word that uh, can bring somebody into god's kingdom yes very much okay or a colleague at the workplace so uh, the prophetic word will draw them and bring rep repentance the prophetic word uh, transforms nations okay um, we read in jeremiah chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said to me behold i have put my words in your mouth see i have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant okay so what is god saying see god is saying that the prophetic word my words in your mouth that's what the prophetic word is isn't it it's god's word in my mouth and when i speak it there is an action what what is that you know we do some uh, demolition if you will root out pull down destroy throw down so if there are strongholds in the nation demonic strongholds territorial spirits you know different things uh, as as we release that prophetic word what's happening there's a demolition happening of the kingdom of darkness okay and at the same time we can also trust god for a restoration a rebuilding you know a, a renovation uh, in that land to also take place because what is he saying to build and plant some new things are taking place in the spiritual realm and these are spiritual realities but you know we know that when the prophetic word comes uh, and we release it there will be a time when we will see the natural outcomes or the impact of the spiritual uh, dynamics okay so god is a god who gives words over nations and kingdoms and that word will transform so one must be willing to release it and uh, many times these prophetic words are released through uh, the prophets of god okay when we talk about uh, personal prophecy a little later uh, we'll see that believers can flow 
you know in in uh, personal prophecy and all that but uh, prophets are the ones who carry that governmental authority uh, to release words over nations okay um, uh, and there are a couple of prophets i don't know if you've ever heard they speak over like india and philippines and um, you know the united states canada this is what the lord would say this is what the lord is doing he's bringing this move uh, he's bringing the revival and different things and when the word is released what happens the spiritual dynamics right something is changing shifting and then there will be a time when we will see that manifest in the natural as well so in uh, the old testament ezekiel 37 is uh, another example of uh, this transformation over a nation so the nation of israel ezekiel prophesies to uh, the destruction of the nation because at that point he terms them you know valley of dry bones okay and he brings upon them the word of the lord he declares a future transformation uh, from being a scattered people and being restored to their own land and at the right time so after centuries it happens but still the important thing is that word is true it is happening but in its own time uh, but the responsibility of the prophet is release it god is saying release it release it in in the right way release it with wisdom so that it can be accepted now the next action or the impact of the prophetic word is that it is very helpful in spiritual warfare in first timothy 1 and verse 18 you now paul says to timothy in this charge i commit to you son timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare so prophecies or prophetic words you can look at it like uh, a bunch of uh, weapons that you have in your bag so we can use it against the enemy and especially at times when uh, we we feel like the promise that god made it's not getting fulfilled you know we can say but lord you said that you're going to do this in my life your word said that you know you're going to show me your glory so what am i doing i'm taking that prophetic word lord you spoke and said that i'm going to such and such a country and you called me uh, as a pastor you called me as a teacher of your word but you said you know what am i doing when i begin to do that i'm actually going against the enemy and this becomes a weapon of spiritual warfare and that's what uh, uh, paul is telling timothy in prayer you use the prophetic word that you have received okay and through them wage the good warfare sometimes what what we do we listen to a prophetic word and it says uh, God is going to use you uh, powerfully as a as a teacher of the word. It's it feels nice. Ah, wow, wow! God is going to use me powerfully, and we just keep it in the shelf. We forget about it. We do nothing with the prophetic word. But the right thing to do is, if there are words spoken over our lives, over our children, over our you know whatever spouse, our family members, take it. Start praying it through. That's what Paul is teaching Timothy. Use prophetic words in prayer and say, God, you said this is what you're going to do. You said this is my destiny. I'm not going to leave you. I, I, you've spoken. You will fulfill it in my life. So use the prophecies in prayer because it's a way of spiritual warfare. Okay. So with that, we will stop for today uh, and we will pick up uh, on the next chapter in our uh, uh, upcoming class, Prophetic Intercession. Um, but then, you know, if you have incidents you want to uh, talk about, please post it on the stream page. So let's pray and close. I want to invite uh, somebody to please lead us in a word of prayer, please. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful session that we've had for the last 100 minutes. Lord, we thank you for the anointing you've put on our lecturer. Of us to attend in the meeting. 
and to attend in these classes. So, Lord, as we learn more about the prophetic ministry, Lord, we pray that you bless us, you encourage us, and you give us more hope and learn more about this. Because when Christ was going in heaven, he said that he won't leave us as often. So, Lord, you will send a comforter who will teach, remind us, and, uh, and tell us everything that we might have forgotten. So, Lord, please remind us. Let these things not stay here on Zoom or on this Google Meet. Let us put them into action because faith without action is dead. I do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and everybody say it. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Lubega. So good to hear your voice. Uh, okay, God bless your class. Have a, a beautiful week. And we will connect again next week and continue to desire the prophetic uh, so that we can flow better. God bless. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Ma. Thank, Thank you. you, Ma. Thank you.